What happens when things go wrong in space? And what about the things that you see up there that no one's really able to completely confirm or deny? Science fiction can sometimes get a real run for its money when it comes to the true stories. Like that time Chris Hadfield had to use his thumb and a stopwatch to save his entire crew. This episode of Sci Fives, we explore five terrifying space stories from astronauts that will, for once, make you glad you're stuck here on Earth. Number one, the severe tile damage of Atlantis. In December 1988, NASA's Atlantis shuttle had insulation from the right solid rocket booster fall only about 85 seconds after launch. This damaged tiles on its starboard side. The heat resistant tiles are part of a thermal protection system. They serve as the ship's armor to divert superheated plasma during re-entry. The crew inspected the damage with a TV camera attached to the spacecraft's robotic arm and immediately grew worried. Shuttle Commander Robert Gibson says he thought he was going to die during atmospheric re-entry. This is where it gets interesting. Due to the fact the mission was to deliver a top-secret satellite to space, the transmission of TV images to mission control were encrypted and had low resolution and speed. The crew repeatedly voiced their concerns as they had a much clearer view, although NASA would not break encryption to properly assess the damage. Fortunately, the crew made it back to Earth safely. However, once NASA could see the extreme nature of the damage, they realized their mistakes. One tile was completely missing and a total of 700 were damaged, and the orbiter's thin aluminum skin was scorched in various sections. NASA assembled a panel to review the incident and made 10 recommendations, one saying the agency should conduct more thorough inspections and improve communication about damage to the thermal protection system. It makes you wonder what they were carrying that they would risk billions of dollars, not to mention human lives. Number two, when Chris Hadfield's speed sensors failed right before a high precision docking. On the astronaut Chris Hadfield's first flight, he prevented what would have been a potentially deadly accident with just his thumb and a stopwatch. 30 seconds before a high-precision docking on the Russian Mir space station, Hadfield's distance and speed sensors failed. The docking needed to be pretty precise considering the shuttle they were docking was a quarter million pounds, and the target was no bigger than a coaster. Hadfield had the job of relaying the speed and distance to the pilot so he could dock safely within the two-minute window. They had to be traveling a tenth of a foot per second, give or take three hundredths of a second, and of course, 30 seconds before this was to go down, the sensors failed and Chris was left to do what anyone docking a giant space shuttle that, with small error, could kill everyone on board would do in that instant. He eyeballed the distance with his thumb and used a stopwatch as his timer. As he knew the dimension in consideration, he was able to make a pretty good educated guess that would land the shuttle hitting the target and within time. Hadfield said it took a few minutes before everyone relaxed and realized they were alive and no damage was done. Imagine that rush. Number three, the strange moon music. Before man had ever stepped foot on the moon, the Apollo 10 mission took a loop around to the dark side. Already a pretty terrifying mission, the crew members on board were prepared to lose contact with Earth for almost an hour. But what they didn't expect is, well, noise. In 2008, NASA declassified a conversation between the 1969 crew where they discussed a strange space music-like sound. According to the NASA documentation, the crew heard the music coming through their radios. That didn't music even sound outer spacey, didn't it? Did you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. The others agreed. However, upon discussion, they decided they wouldn't talk about it to the public. And NASA then classified the information for 39 years. The interesting part is that the moon doesn't have an atmosphere or a magnetic field, so no noise should have been coming from it. NASA has replied to this and stated that it was the result of their own two radio feeds interfering with one another. However, some astronauts, such as Al Warden, don't believe this theory. He says astronauts are heavily trained and know the type of sounds to expect. Therefore, if they think it was something out of the ordinary, then it probably was. After about an hour, the noise suddenly stopped. The official story was that it was radio interference, but even if that was where the noise was coming from, it's still gotta be pretty creepy to be on the dark side of the moon without Earth communication, only to hear creepy space music leaking through your radio. Number four, when Luca Parmentano almost drowned in his helmet. Flight engineer Luca Parmentano was working to repair some cables on the ISS during a spacewalk when he started to feel condensation pool in the back of his helmet. His helmet was filling with water, but of course, he couldn't take his helmet off, you know, in space. 
Houston then terminated the mission about an hour and a half into what was supposed to be six or seven hours of maintenance. While Luca was moving back towards the airlock, the water had almost completely covered his visor, and he began to worry that he would lose audio contact. Luca realized to get over to the antenna on his route, he would have to move his body in a vertical position. As he turned upside down, the sun set and the vision he had completely vanished. And to make things worse, the water was now covering his nose. The upper part of his helmet was now full of water, and he had no sense of direction to get back to the airlock. Fortunately, he did make it back, and once inside, the crew quickly worked to dry him off. And this all occurred on his second spacewalk ever. And that brings us to number five when the Muir space station sustained the worst fire ever by an orbiting spacecraft. Jerry Leninger was enjoying his extended stay on the Russian Muir space station, which at the time was the longest period of time any American astronaut had been sent into space for, when an extremely dangerous fire threatened the lives of everyone on board. During Jerry's meal on dehydrated borscht, a tank of concentrated combustible oxygen-based chemicals caught fire and caused an uncontrollable blaze. This was essentially a worst case scenario for the crew, the fire was releasing toxic substances in the air, and there was a risk of rapid decompression if the flame burned a hole through the thin aluminum separating the inside from the vacuum of space. While the station usually holds only three passengers at a time, they were in a crew turnover, so six astronauts were on board. While three of them were fighting the fire, the other three were planning an emergency escape. This is when they noticed a problem. One of the two ships was blocked by the fire, so only three would be able to leave. Luckily, the team was able to put the fire out. They did have to wear oxygen masks for a while until their environment balanced out, but this was much better than the alternative. This has been the first sci-fi. Stay tuned for more lists on all things science and science fiction.